Hi, I'm Paul Ashman with Manic Salamander. Today I'm going to show you how to install a screw-in style throttle lock. Here's what you got to work with. You've got the manual, which is specific to your bike. You've got a set of noses, which will screw into or around the big threads at the end of your handlebar. You got two sizes of screw, depending on uh, what you bought and what bike you have, uh, different screws will be ideal. You've got a pair of lock washers, and you've got a bunch of shims, and the number of shims varies with the kind of bike you have, too. The noses typically screw onto the motorcycle with a 15 millimeter wrench on their wrench flats, and the screws will end up screwing into the end of the nose. The first big step on installation is you have to take out the old weights. Uh, different kinds of weights might go where this kit goes. Uh, this particular kind has the male threads built in. So you find the right Allen wrench and you stick it right in the weight itself and you turn it off. Alternatively, a weight might be bolted on with a bolt that goes through a hole that goes right through the middle of the weight, but this one has the threads integral. And at Manic Salamander here, we purposely engineered the noses to fit in the same place. Uh, this is a level of detail you don't find with most other companies, any that I know of. Now it's time to take a good look at the end of the hand grip. If you have a weight that you're installing, this isn't quite so important, but if you've got a throttle lock, this is important that the throttle sleeve, which is typically plastic, is sticking out past the end of the grip. That's not going to work really well because the collar that engages the, uh, the grip can't reach over quite that much plastic. It's limited to about a 32nd of an inch of plastic sticking out. So with this you've got two choices. You could either uh, take compressed air and squirt it in behind the the grip here and get the grip to start flapping on the throttle sleeve and you could move the grip out so that it was uh, just overhanging the end of the plastic. Uh, about 80 psi is good enough for that and it's got to not be a safety air gun. There can't be any sideways air vents. It's got to all go out the nozzle and that's a really handy way to do it. If that's not available or if for some reason you don't want to move your grip out, what you can do is you can take out a pocket knife, a nice sharp pocket knife, and you can rock it over the end of this all the way around the grip evenly until it all comes off. Alternately you can try to whittle on it, but that's a little harder files work too, uh, that would be okay to take a metal file or something and do it. Uh, I like to finish it off with the pocket knife because it leaves a nice smooth cut if it's sharp. So that's prep that you may or may not have to do depending on the bike you have. Here we see what I'm talking about with those big female threads in the end of the bars. Uh, your look may vary. Um, the handlebar may not be recessed inside the sleeve the way it is on this bike. Uh, or the threads may actually be male and sticking out past the sleeve. Uh, it depends on the installation that you're talking about. Uh, but that's where the nose goes. Here's a little detail about the throttle lock when it comes to those throttle sleeves. You see here that the throttle lock, this surface on the outside of the end of the collar is what engages the rubber grip. It's not supposed to engage hard plastic or metal or chrome or anything else. It's just for that nice soft rubber grip. To make room for the throttle sleeve, there's this inner cutout right here that tries to swallow up some of that throttle sleeve. So, so that gives you a little bit of allowance, but if that allowance is not enough and the throttle sleeve sticks out too much, you've got to find a way to either cut it down or move the grip outward so that there's not much throttle sleeve sticking out. So here's your first step to actually installing it. You got the nose, you got the bar. Just because this is a volunteer bike I'm not going to cut down the throttle sleeve like I told you to do, but this is the way you do it. 
you screw the nose right in like so and it looks like that more or less here's the part where you uh, adjust the clearance between the throttle and the grip you put in a certain number of shims the manual will tell you just to start out you put them right in there then you lay your th throttle lock against the grip like that what you're looking at here is a very excessive clearance so we need to go down take some shims out it goes down a little bit this is still too much so on this bike this doesn't usually happen but on this bike it's actually going to be necessary to put compressed air behind this grip or do something to hike the grip out toward the throttle lock because it can't make up that distance the actual amount of distance you want is about like that about a thirty second of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch is ideal about in that range once you've established that clearance however many shims you put in into the weight that's how many you assemble it together with since I've been telling you you might want to move your grip in and out, I'll show you the best way that I know of to do it. With the compressed air, about 85 psi, you want a blow gun that has no side holes. You don't want, if you cover this up, you don't want any air to get out. And this is pretty good. They call those ones that you don't want safety blow guns. Safety is generally a, another way of saying it doesn't work very well, even if it's safer. Um, so you stick it behind the broad side of the grip and you try to point it down the sleeve with 85 psi that's enough to get the rubber to flap around on the sleeve and that allows you to move it see how far it moved let's try that well there you go that's just a little bit too tight because I can feel when, when I move the throttle sleeve, I can feel that it's rubbing against this just a little bit. So that's a little too tight. But I, that's actually ideal because I want one shim in there to give or take at least so that it, I, you can adjust it if something changes. It doesn't usually change, but it's nice to have that margin. So here's a shim. Dump it in. That's about the way I like. So now I'll, I'll take the shorter screw, which I'm pulling off of his uh, top box, and the lock washer. It just so happens that this particular style, the screw-in style, it never has that red ring around the head of the screw like you see in the pictures of some of the other ones. It, um, it's just plain. So you get out your Allen wrench and you screw it right into the end of that nose. That ought to be enough. There is a torque spec in the manual if you want to get fussy about it. It's good to play it safe if you haven't done a lot of wrenching. It's good to follow that torque spec. So now you've got a nice free throttle or you can hold the throttle still and move it around at your will. If you if you need to shut it down, if you need to stop, wham, you just do it. You need to unlock the throttle, you just pull the collar away and turn it a tiny bit in the throttle off direction. And there's your install.